I'll take a look. Hmm? My end comes to all things in time. Seal the frost-hewn breach, and instruct the pilgrims in the patience of Remergond.
Hmm? A pleasant surprise traveling with you, Horabius. Nice of you to say that. I was on the road alone for years, and I'm happy to have company for a change. My part of the country has a saying about Orleans. Face of skin, let him in. Face of hair, best beware. But you're more like a skin-faced Orland. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, my tribe has a saying, Head of Brunette, they're all set. Head of Blonde says everything wrong. Wait, was that bad? I meant it as a compliment. Yeah? Quickly and quietly. Why not? There! Done! This won't stop me for long. There, done. Gods, it's gotten hard to concentrate. You shouldn't be here, Traveler. And the others of my clan won't be so lenient if they find you sneaking around. Rima Gon's domain. A place where all things are mingled like snowflakes in a blizzard. It's a vortex of such chaos that even the Beast of Winter himself could not calculate the trajectory the infinite particles of essence there. The frost-hewn breach is a weak spot in the barrier between us and the white void. Thin ice on a frozen lake. So that we can die. Permanently. We've lived more lifetimes than any mortal should. But if anything could pass through the frost-hewn breach, it would enter directly into the White Void. This death is overdue for us. We just have to find a way through. We call ourselves Glamfelon. We received a Watcher in our lands a season ago and paid her to tell us of the origins of our souls. We wanted to contemplate the essence that fills us and consider how Remergaunt might shatter and sow us once our days are spent.
With the cat's nose, how is it you failed to notice your rotten stench? Failed to notice? Hardly. I put work into smelling this way. I should have expected. I never know what sort of game is downwind. I need to smell like part of nature, not an interloper. What's impressive is cleaving a man's spine without lopping the head clean off. That takes aim. Did that once. My case was an accident, and I still wake up some nights feeling bad for him. Clan of Glam Felon ventured from the white that winds to find the crack in the ice. When you sealed it, you damned their souls to a slow, weathering year. A fitting reply from an obedient servant. For each, there is a season watcher. Winter's shroud covers all things in its time. The watcher seeks something long lost. What is it you search for? Your past is one of loss and sorrow. Yet there is a greater plot at work here, Watcher. Theos acts not for himself. He is the Burned Queen's quiet slave. Theos is a winter gale, unseen by the world even while he carves and shapes it. And Anamancy as well. He would see those secrets lost, the knowledge forgotten. And he would see his mistress grow fat on the essence of thousands. For her, he has harvested the unborn souls of the Deerwood. To consume them, to collect her evaporating power, re She would reclaim her status like an island of silt dredged from the sea. 
With this fresh, raw essence, Wudika will seize power over those gods and kith who have refused to acknowledge her authority. He, he believes that some knowledge is best lost to mortals. More importantly, Wudika despises it. Theos has removed these souls from the cycle. They are ice melting in the sun. Let them fade. Let them forget this world and be forgotten by it. Take the souls she so desires and grind them into dust. It is the destiny of all things to crumble and join the chaos that follows this world. To mingle, roiled and stirred by the tides of the universe. It is not an unkind fate. I am the Beast of Winter. I neither speed nor alter my path for the whims and desires of Kith. I take souls at the time of my choosing. These souls, they have already forgotten their place in this world. They have been lost to existence. She desires to order chaos and shackle the agents of change in the world. Even now, she only barely keeps the Pact of the Gods to leave the affairs of Kith in mortal hands. And so we call on you to do the same. Such are the schemes of the Queen that was. When you reach the Burial Isle, we will send lost souls to guide you through the pit. This is our gift to you. And whether you would heed us or no, understand that our end comes to all things eventually. But do not choose lightly. We forget nothing. Least of all, a betrayal. Do not wait forever. We wait. You return. We do not wait forever. Stop right there. Oh, I was a great shot when I had two eyes. You're in the... I'm much worse now. Did you it's think hard you for me to judge this here in your old home? I've seen your trials with my own eyes. Thuros, what are you doing? An assassin sent by the Inquisition, my lady. My own brother returned home. I My Lady Yavara, I beg of you, this is an Inquisitor. This is a missionary, same as I was, taught the wrong things as I was. If I can't have faith in one man's ability to reason, once he knows the truth, what hope do we have? My lady, he, he admits being a spy! That should make him less of a threat, wouldn't you agree? I have nothing to hide. All I see here is an opportunity to persuade someone who could help us. We have many former missionaries here. They are our most loyal, our most helpful. Come. Why aren't more women complimenting me on that?
do you remember when we were children, and the missionaries came to tell us about the gods? And we snuck out one night and climbed the watchtower in the old fort because we thought we could see them better from up there. That fort burned down a few years ago when we cast the missionaries out. It was the missionaries who set fire to it. They didn't want us to be able to use it. I miscalculated many things since this began. I'm relieved you weren't one of them. I always knew this path would have consequences. I don't think I can stay here any longer. I am told the Inquisition is gathering an army, that they have sent messengers to bargain with rulers from distant lands. If war is coming, I should be doing what Theos is doing. I will need allies. Allies and a stronghold that can resist an invading army. Asionis. They have held off many would-be invaders. Another turn, Inquisitor. I ask again, Yovara Ixensios, do you confess to these heresies of which you stand accused? Do you confess to apostasy? I confess to renouncing a mistake. Do you confess to conspiracy against the one true faith? I confess to opening minds. Do you confess to false prophecy? I confess to following a false prophet. Indeed. And where might we find this heretic? He wears the robes of a Grand Inquisitor. You have no followers here, heretic. Only my truth, then. Another turn! No! Wait! Wait! I'm ready! I'm ready! You are ready to give a confession? I'm ready to hear one from you! After what seems like an eternity, your rapid descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust, breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Audra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath, their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jumped through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos and forever out of reach. Your only way 
lies ahead. I think I dislocated my... That's better. I think that statue of Woodica was watching us soil ourselves on the way down. Everyone all right? No shattered knees? Good. Just me, then. This place is cursed. What is it, Watcher? If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. It stinks of her. It is justice, but if her greater purpose was to think Margaret would fall prey to such deceit, and Aethys, Widewind had always claimed to be invading Deerwood to free it. What if it were true? What if he had come to stop Woodica's plot before it began? Surely Aethys earned his death at Godhammer Citadel, but not for those reasons, not to keep him silent. If must we always be tools of gods? If Woodica and Margrin, if they are the cause of this, the Hollowborn, if the purges were never necessary, I know it had to be done. No, it... I am glad to have walked this far with you, seen this truth. Perhaps it was what I was meant to see. All these dances of words and intrigues. Machines of men, twisted, ripping the souls of children and by the gods. The goddess of justice, Woodica. She must answer to her own justice. Anyone with a shred of spirit seeks both justice and punishment. It burns in the heart of anyone who lives. Is this some final joke at my expense? To test my faith further? And why would you think that, Watcher? If all you have are questions, then I have enough of those. She is a bitch of a goddess, to be sure. You answer a question with a question. Then why did I feel her disappointment at Halgot? Why were we shamed? Kill me. She is a goddess. I still drink from her burning breasts, Watcher. If she wished me dead, she could trace me to my source and kill me. There's no proof, Watcher. I was a fool to think you could help me see any farther than I could. That is all you have, a feeling. If feelings provoked me to say every thought that crossed my mind... Yeah? Hmm? There! Done! Hmm? Would you look at this?
Thing isn't doing its job. Got it. This won't stop me for long. My mind feels sharpest. Why not? There, done. Hello, brother. It has truly been ages. You are so different now from who you were then, yet much remains the same. Old troubles with a new face. What is it that has brought you here? A gallant gesture, if a bit misguided. I can only guess your presence here has something to do with Theos. The energy of this place changes when he is near. After all this time, he would still stand against the tide. I will tell you what I remember. I can see his influence, still hanging like a weight about your neck. It was just after the trial. You were agitated. I think because you started to consider that what I was teaching may have been true. That the gods aren't real. She's not serious. <laughs> Perhaps not to her. Many are those whom the gods have scorned. Nonsense! Clearly she has not been on the receiving end of a god's ire. That doesn't seem possible. What I taught was that the gods whose faith we had been spreading were not gods at all, but something else entirely. Something created by people. They were conceived by Engwith. A society of high minds and broad concerns. Theos's people. In their time, every people worshipped its own gods. Sometimes they warred over it, generation after generation. They prodded and worked the stitching of the world and unlocked its secrets. One day, they found an answer. Except the answer was no answer at all. There were no gods to be found. It shook them, this finding. If they could discover this on their own, how long until others would? How long before war and chaos reigned over a world without consequence? 
The Anguithan missionaries all knew it, but they never told the rest of us. They meant it to be a secret that died with them. And in the end, they allowed their bloodlines to fade from memory. I had been assigned to join a few of them at a temple. I found the door to their chambers closed, but the room was stone and the door thin. Their voices carried. I never thought of it as faith, but I think you are right to call it that. Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. I became a missionary because the gods brought me hope that I wanted to bring to others. For a time, the truth sent me to a dark place. Then the day came when I realized nothing had changed. You asked me this once before. Nothing I can say would be any proof, and it may be certainty your soul craves. Resolution. Everyone faces this truth at one time or another. Few confront it. Few have the stomach to ask what if. What if all the tragedy, all the persecution, came in defense of an imposter? But that's not... That, that can't be right. Aethys, he... He's done miracles for people. The power of the gods is undeniable. The truth of the story they weave is not. What if it were forbidden knowledge rather than fault that earned your doom? What of your guilt? Margren set a path for me. She is fickle and cruel, but that is how she teaches. And what if the fires themselves were lies? Lies you told yourself to bridge the gap between experience and truth. What if neither guide knew the way? How then would you choose a course? Wow teaches us that the gods cannot give you lasting wisdom. They can only inspire you to find wisdom in your own time. What if our burdens come to us not because they are meant to be, but because they happen to be? They shape us all the same. It doesn't matter how I drew the small tooth, or even that Pursok had become a deer. The task fell to me, and I completed it. What if the cycle of birth and death is nothing more than a tool of endless preoccupation? Well said. Just think of the whole conversation we're having. Whether or not the gods are real, simply asking the question forces us to look closely at what we know. Even if we can't answer with certainty if they're real or not, the exploration is what makes us grow. A question is a journey, and a journey is what makes us who we are, it's true. But when one journey leads only to the next, then where may one find rest? I ask these things not to trouble you but to show why they must be confronted. No answer is simple, but somewhere between them all lies a truth so beautiful, not even a god could conceive it. Do we not owe ourselves a chance to find our part in it? If that is truly what you believe, then you are a far different person than the one I knew. I've been alone here with my thoughts for so long now. I've found peace with my failures and with my punishment. I need to know why you chose to remain with the Inquisition, even after you'd learned the truth. Do you... Do you remember? I knew it was a risk, taking you into my camp. I knew you still had strong feelings. Good. Good. 
The things I taught. The things I believed. I needed to hear that. I needed to know it wasn't because... I've always looked up to you, since we were children. You had heard both sides, seen everything. If not you, then who? I expected dissent, but I needed to know that true faith would prevail, even knowing what you've told me. Some part of me knows it doesn't truly answer what I wished to know, nor will an eternity of silent contemplation. And what of your understanding of our past? Are you at ease with the choice you made? At first I thought this might be the source of your soul's anguish. But now I see I was mistaken. You are not divided on this matter. You have put it behind you. It is with Theos that your agony lies, in sun and shadow. Your questions are not for me, but for him. And it may be that only an answer from the mouth of Theos himself will satisfy your needs. Yet if there is anything I can tell you that would be of use, in a matter of speaking. This is Braith Yaman, the Court of the Penitents. Souls are confined here until they repent. They must beg the forgiveness of a god, pledge their soul to them, and they will be lifted from this place to the world above. This prison was full once in the days of the Inquisition. But time weathers all things, even will. I'm the only tenant who remains. Yet, I feel their presence strongly now, as it was in the beginning. You have brought many of them here. They aid you because they would bend you to their own purposes. But these souls, these forgiven the gods have bequeathed you like chattel. They were loyal followers in life. They will be with you to the very end. I could not say for sure, but you have been to Sun and Shadow before, and it came at a crossroads in your life, when much of what you knew had been upended. His words mattered to you when you knew him then. After you and I spoke, you went immediately to seek him out. Perhaps you simply sought confirmation from the man you trusted. He cares only for the secret he keeps locked away. That's why he's always favored Woodica. It isn't in her love of promises or justice. It's her disregard for the rules. Her willingness to do what is necessary. To Theos, she's not a deity, but an ally with which to conspire. When her power waxes, she does as she pleases with this realm, as well as hers. And she wants that secret guarded as much as he. If Theos succeeds, there will be a shift in the balance of power among the gods. Woodica was vanquished once, when the other gods decided she had gone too far, and her power diminished. You will not find a more resolute being on all of Eora. There is no offer you could make, nor spell you could cast nor pain you could inflict that would make him reveal what he hides. Theos will not wait for you. If you do not catch up to him now, you may never find him again. It is a cruel fate to wait all this time to be reunited with my only brother, only to be forced to part soon after. If ever we should meet again, in this life or any other. I hope to find you at peace. Eh? Huh? See much, but I hear a noise like a pig choking on wet feet. So, uh, 
I guess Durance is breathing at least. Look at the size of this place. Incredible. I knew the builders could work wonders, but this, this is amazing. Many spirits stir here, edged with anger. Would you look at this? Can you do that again? I, I had something in my eye. Missed most of it. <laughs> Don't even slow it down. And it... it has to be. Wow! But I never thought he'd reveal himself in person. You understand the value of a mystery watcher. A buried scroll, a hidden truth. You unravel a thread watcher. One you have lost and discovered over generations. A nebula of souls, blind and brimming with potential. The answer to Woodica's question at the beginning of yours. And yet fresh snowfall covers tracks, and waves wipe footprints from the sand, changing the terrain. This is the landscape of new journeys and uncharted discoveries. None know. They could end up anywhere in the realms of gods or mortals, whole or divided. Discovering them again and charting their course through the ether will be a new mystery. No end, Watcher. That is the purpose. That is a word for endings, and this is but a crossroads. Even I do not know what you would choose. shot with this. <laughs>
Yeah? Got it. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Ready to take the oath to spread the word of the gods. I am trusting you to remain loyal. I wouldn't have. This is a missionary, Asionis. They have. You are ready to give a confession. <laughs> I am ready to hear one. From you! You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? The Inquisition. That woman sought only to destroy the foundations of peace and civility that my people sacrificed everything to build. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? Something men can turn to in their darkest moments when their days seem only like bridges from one tragedy to the next. Our gods are all these things. We're in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. The Inquisition will not end until we have pronounced judgment on all of them. How did you find it? 
Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. Then she should have obeyed. I asked one thing of all my followers. She was incapable. A waste of rare talent and intellect. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? Or is it as my agents suggest, that they have no direction of their own? You. You worshipped Aethus, did you not? Your spies are good. What gave me away? The cape? Yet when your god needed you the most, you chose your country. We were being invaded. Not by anyone who was acting like a god. They made cake. Hard to blame people for losing faith when it's the gods who are misbehaving. The gods argue over how best to prevent Kith society from destroying itself. These disruptions would not be necessary were mortal instinct not so diseased. What of you, Orlan? My agents tell me you are far from home, both in distance and in years. Ostracism? Is that the name for the groin rash your mother gave me? Don't fool yourself, old man. You know nothing about me. I give both gods their due service, but I am servant to neither. My tribe was unfit to serve me, and yet, I'm not fit to serve any god. I need only serve myself. Are you your own master? You built a weapon that delivered exactly as promised. I served my goddess as you did yours. Yet the other builders were slain. Eleven of a dozen. Why not you? There was a message there, whether she meant it or not. A whore's beguiling charms, nothing more. But the spells broke now. You are far from home, Dwarf. I knew my hunt would send me a long way from Masuk. It was a challenge I was glad to undertake for my village. A journey, then. It must be of some import to take you so far and to last so long. Anything worth doing comes at great cost. So it was worth it, then, to tell a dying beast of things it neither understood nor had memory of. You are here because you are lost. I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you, but our business was concluded long ago. I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. The spread of our faith ended many such atrocities. I do what I must to ensure it continues to do so. The heart of this country has skipped a beat, nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule. And when plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. It is to show the proper perspective. And replaced it with one far worse. Had you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created. We are not all so virtuous as she. More than that, it would hollow existence. All mysteries are ever unending. All purposes are scripted from meaninglessness. Only means of reclosure. Only the wheel, turning without mercy, grinding for sinners to dust. It is the least of all possible costs. Are you so dense as to think a faithless world would not be ridden with calamity?
we are all controlled by our own doubts. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for aid. Rock ten. I hope this is the end, but what's to stop him from being born again with the same ill intent? And before you suggest the option, no, I'm not eating his soul. I'll After journeying for lifetimes, I can't imagine his failure, knowing it was all for nothing. Thousands of souls he has tortured. Would that he could live those sufferings a thousand times himself. Some point, you have to look at the things your god is telling you to do. And ask yourself if it's worth it. No! You cannot allow this. He will have no reminders. He will not remember the message we wrote on his fragmented bones and carved into his flesh. You've given him a clean tablet, and a chance to be of use in his next life. This is a kindness Theos does not deserve. But perhaps whatever merit is in him will be known to the world the next time around. Let us hope his old nature dies with his memory. You know something of quiet servitude, Watcher. Groveling and simpering before the gods whose aid you need, so that when they finally raise you to a place of power, you can seize what you desire. You have labored at the pleasure of others, that shriveled hag in Hadrat House, those preening soldiers with more taste for silk than steel, the wretched tribesmen playing out their fantasies of grandeur. 
And now the gods give you orders and commands, even while you set out to fix what they cannot. The exiled queen is not an ungrateful patron. Finish the work Theos began. Strengthen Woodica with these souls and allow her to become the most powerful of all the gods. You say that now, but when you're standing in front of the machine, considering the lifetimes and the powers that await you, we'll see what you do. At your command, the ancient device became your instrument, spinning to life with deafening resonance and gathering up the swirling essence like thread on a great spindle. There, in the pale pulsing glow of the machine that set you on this path long ago, you summoned all your strength, focusing on your objective and blocking out all else. With a single concussive blast that rocked the chamber and sent you tumbling to the ground, you freed the souls from their stasis. Exhausted, your consciousness slipping away, your last sight was of the machine, dark and dormant. Then your eyes closed, and sleep welcomed you at long last. After coming to and searching for some time, you discovered the route Theos used to enter Sun in Shadow, and embarked on a long and arduous ascent back to the surface. You emerged in Ter Evron after days of tunneling through the rubble Theos had left behind, and when you stepped into the daylight, you were faced with a different Deerwood than the one you had left. At your direction, the souls diverted by Theos were guided back to the vessels originally meant for them. For the first time, parents of hollow-born children woke to the cries of their infants and looked into their eyes to see them staring back. People fell to their knees where they stood, thanking Helia or Magrin, or even Aethus for their forgiveness of whatever guilt they felt they bore. But for all the relief that had come to some parents, others only found new grief. For many thousands of Hollowborn had died during Widewind's legacy, many by their parents' own hands. For those children, there would be no homecoming. Yet the last hollow birth was in the past now, and those parents willing to risk trying for a new child were frequently rewarded, often with twins. Many felt they saw Helia's hand in it, and the year would be remembered as the year of Helia's splendor. Though you had killed Lord Radric in his throne room, so strong was his drive to rid his land of Aethasians that he returned to life as a death guard, a deathless crusader for his brutal cause. With the remains of his humanity stripped away, Radric came to see all the people of Gilded Vale as worshippers of Aethus, and one day he led his forces into the village personally to see them all purged from his lands. Gilded Vale was left a hollow shell, its buildings ruined, and its people slaughtered. Even travelers and would-be squatters knew better than to take refuge inside its borders. Lord Radric returned to Radric's hold, where he remained, keeping eternal watch over his barren domain. Following the assassinations of Duke Avar Wolfgren and Lady Webb, Defiance Bay was thrown into political upheaval. In the ensuing weeks, the streets had become the domain of looters and blackguards. Few dared to step outside their own doors alone or unarmed. 
but order was soon re-established by the Knights of the Crucible, who, despite their depleted numbers, had gained favor in the public eye for their role in the unraveling of the conspiracy surrounding Widewind's legacy, and were quickly reinforced by returning forces from Fleetbreaker Castle. For the Knights, their resurgence marked a return to the tradition as well. Having seen firsthand the dangers presented by dabblers and animancy, the Order quickly abolished the practice internally, preferring the familiarity of their hammers and forges to the uncertainties of Essence and Adra. Their identity rediscovered, the Knights suppressed their political aspirations and began once again to train their recruits in the art of blacksmithing, recapturing the post-revolutionary ideals of Deerwood and regaining the respect of its citizens as a result. Though the machine atop Ter Noaneth had been disabled, it had not seen its last use. Heritage Hill was rebuilt, and no sooner had the first families moved in to resettle the district than members of the Leaden Key, acting under standing orders from their Grand Master, climbed the tower and reactivated the machine. The initiates slew a handful of the new settlers under cover of night, and watched as history repeated itself, the victims reanimating and devouring the survivors. After this second incident, the district would remain abandoned. The Duke's assassination at the apparent hands of an Anamancer had caused catastrophic rioting in the streets of Defiance Bay. But those who had escaped the melee in the palace hearings remembered the testimonies of the strange guest who had shown up that day and absolved Anamancy, implicating the Leaden Key instead. The rumor spread quickly, and soon the popular belief was that the assassin had been a Leaden Key spy. When the legacy had lifted, People came to see it not as a sign that the riots had been according to the gods' wishes, as Theos had hoped, but as a confirmation that Anamancy had never been the source of the problem in the first place. Deerwoodens instead convinced themselves that the riots had somehow purged Defiance Bay of leaden key spies, and that the end of Widewind's legacy was their well-deserved reward. The rage against Anamancers was quickly forgotten and those who had survived were permitted to return to Brackenberry Sanitarium and rebuild it so they might resume their studies. The fortress of Cad Nua emerged as a bastion of security in the midst of an untamed land, becoming the envy of every thane and earl in Deerwood. Legend grew over time of its impregnability, and stories of formidable invaders easily scattered by the Keep's defenses became popular around the hearths of Deerwood and Inns. Horavius took his leave of the party and, after his first bath in years, returned to his nomadic lifestyle. With his homesickness expunged, he found renewed joy and tranquility in his wandering survey of the wilderness. For the first time in his life, he ventured beyond sight of the mountains of Er Glonthath. During his travels, he penned numerous journals and sketches detailing his travels through frozen tundra, searing desert, and tropical forests. Wherever he went, Horavius left behind stories of the Autumn Druid, a temperamental, one-eyed, wise man of the forest, known to bring food to lost travelers and unusual advice to anyone willing to ask him a question. Adair chose not to return home to Gilded Vale. Still most comfortable far from cities, he settled in Deerford, which, like many towns in the Deerwood, was beginning the slow process of rebuilding. Believing now that it was the obligation of Kith to be the leaders their gods had not, Adair was soon named mayor of the town, and under his guidance, Deerford soon began to prosper. He expelled the last of the Scanites from the area and drew new settlers with the offer of land, a trick he had learned from someone he otherwise preferred to forget. With each passing day, Deerford would come to more closely resemble the gilded veil of Adair's childhood, the one worthy of its name. When the dust settled in sun and shadow, Aloth looked upon the remains of Theos Ixarchanon, his former master. He saw where the Grand Master had gone wrong and what would be required to undo the harm Theos had wrought. With a flick of his wrist, he burned Theos's robe, headdress, and every other symbol of the man's power. Never again, he vowed, should Kith live in fear and blind obedience to an authority they did not understand. Armed with the knowledge and courage he had gained on his journeys with the Watcher, he set out on the long and lonely task of dismantling the Leaden Key. 
With the Watcher's goals accomplished and his own vows fulfilled, Kanorua sailed back to Dekoa. His friends and family found him much changed, for a pall had fallen upon the man, smothering his former enthusiasm. Called before the Lore College, Kana told them of the pain the Anguithan legacy brought to the lands abroad. He insisted that a search for answers abroad could only fragment the Rawatai people, as it had done to the Deerwood. His findings were met with much respect, and Kanarua's voice came to be considered an influential one in the growing move towards Rawatai's isolation. With Theos defeated and the souls released from sun and shadow, healthy children were born once again in the Deerwood. The grieving mother sought a place where she might do penance for the birthing bell. She returned to Deerford, where, to the astonishment of the villagers, she delivered the first healthy child in over a decade. She remained there, and with each new birth, she saw a measure of hope restored to the Deerwood and a measure of grace for her own troubled past. Durance continued to blame Woodica for the atrocities of the Saints' War. Believing Magrin to have been a pawn in the machinations of the Queen that was, and feeling that Theos's expulsion had been a step towards reconciliation with his goddess, Durance tried for a time to reopen communication with her. When only silence came, he took it as a condemnation of his continued existence. Ultimately, he built a pyre and threw himself upon it, using his own shattered staff as kindling. Sagani experienced the four months of her journey back to Masuk in vivid colors. She strove to memorize every moment of her final trip through the Deerwood, Herr Glonfoth, the Valian Republics, and beyond, preparing to tell her village of what she had seen on her long journey. All of Masuk shared in her triumph, and she felt her pride and elation magnified by the joy of her village. Never again did she doubt the value of her sacrifices. After decades as a long hunter, Sagani finally became one of Masuk's most respected elders. She guided her community with wise counsel, and a generation after she finally passed, another huntress journeyed into the world to find her soul. For you, the death of Theos brought an end to your waking visions and a silence to the whispers of the past. In their absence, you were able to sleep. The questions of a distant lifetime ceased to trouble your soul. All that remained was what to make of the answer. But at the moment, there was little to be done, and the matter would have to wait. A long journey loomed ahead. <laughs>